Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back to Clumsy Flying. How's everyone doing? Glad to see many familiar faces. The usual suspects, the bros. <laughs> Did that bro alert sound? Why not? Hmm, maybe there's a delay somewhere. How is everyone doing? Thank you guys for joining, really appreciate it. Brings a smile to my face this early in the morning. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. First in D, Jack. Will you look at that? How was hunting? Sorry, I had to drop off. You know, you guys know what I did. <laughs> it's no question anymore by now what I do when I drop off like that. <laughs> Hello, Calvin. Hey, Alex. <clears throat> guys, I managed to find some rabbits. <clears throat> Thanks for joining today, guys. It's going to be a very insightful day. Lots of learning to do. And I think Alex has a lot of insights for us about that particular aspect as well. Old school flying today. Back in the 50s, I guess. Thanks for joining. Hey, Patrick. How are you? Glad you could join today, man. Tom, thanks for joining as well. No problem. And yes, new timer. For those who saw it, I was getting tired of that luckiest guy font. It was a bit too comical. I wanted a bit more flashy, you know, something that would uh, uh, rhyme a bit more with the music. <laughs> Associates everything old with you. Oh, you're just an, an uh, how do you say, antiquity? You know, antique enthusiast. That's the first message I see in chat. Which one? Ah, the sound alerts browser is offline. Yeah, I tried adding that to the starting soon scene at some point. The entire OBS crashed and I haven't tried since then. So I'm not going to try today. <laughs> but maybe if I remember for Friday. Properly seasoned, that's the term there. That's the politically correct term. <laughs> Thanks for joining guys, we have an amazing stream planned today. Going to be checking out the Douglas DC6 for the first time on stream. Let's go ahead and check some of the stats out. It's a 4 piston engine, kind of aircraft, radial piston engines with how many? 18 cylinders each engine? Oh my goodness. Two rows of nine cylinders each one times four max weight 107,200 pounds if I remember correctly this guy is able to push out around 10,000 horsepower to lift itself up and we will definitely be hearing more of that later we'll see how that goes <clears throat> antique yes <laughs> hey Rick Glad you could join. How are you? A V18. Exactly, exactly. Actually, it's a star 18. Because it's a star. The, the first letter is depending on the, the layout of the cylinders, right? Because it's star-shaped. It's uh, radial, right? It's uh, around. So it's maybe an O18. Could be looking good. Good planes you're coming to buy off the marketplace. You got 9 USD. Uh, depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking for a small plane, a modern, uh, an antique, an airliner? <clears throat> a small one. Well, for small planes, I would not recommend anything more or anything other than the Arrow. The just flight arrow although i don't think that's in the marketplace just yet so maybe you can wait for a bit first or is it now maybe let's check let's check actually so let's see if you go to the marketplace here and put in arrow for me that is the hands down the best ga plane we have at the moment uh it is yes the arrow 3 although the turbo version i think should be in here as well 
arrow, the Piper arrow. It's the arrow 3, but there are multiple versions of this one. Yeah, I'm not sure if this one includes the the turbo versions as well. It does, doesn't look like it. Yeah, maybe well, maybe you can purchase it. I'm not sure if you're into that. But this is one of the best GA planes out there. Highly recommend it. <clears throat> Somewhat fast. It's not the fastest though. Yeah. Dash 8 from mod side. Looking forward to trying it. 3, 2. Oh, good luck, good luck. The Dash 8 is a very famous plane. I've never flown it. <clears throat> Alright, so what do we start with? We are going to be flying in the Philippines, of course. We're going to be flying in on air with the FBO network I put in and I just created two more bases. Let me show you that one. Uh, first, maybe let me log in. So we have, thankfully, the DC-6 available in on air. And on air actually has a new feature. It has some kind of, um, it has scenic tours now. The sightseeing tours now, which is pretty cool, and it added a, a a whole new thing over the Nordic region. So recently we got World Update, uh, was it four or five? The one with the Nordics, yeah, Norway, um, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Iceland, I think even Finland, have been modified, have been improved, and as part of the new sightseeing feature in On Air, it uh, now adds the capability of having those sightseeing jobs so they added one which is uh, exploring the nordic so we can see here this uh, where are you this guy 3000 nautical miles in total 10 legs and this takes you over all of the new airports across the nordic areas uh, starting in iceland crossing over to norway then denmark then to sweden finland back to norway and to what do you call this is it the uh, svalbard yes the northernmost island in there and along the way there are these sightseeing adventures so like you can see this small camera icon here which is this is new so you depart from that airport which is oh how do you read that <laughs> is safirdur uh, to and from is the same so you're basically going back there so you're going to those uh, landmarks you're going to stay there for a while like hover or fly around it for a couple of minutes there's a certain time that you have to do it so that's uh, the sightseeing part you go to all of those and then you go back to whichever go to whichever airport is indicated in this case it's the same so that's how the sightseeing tour works and it's pretty cool Nice to have that now in on air. So the plan, guys, is a long term, okay? Well, maybe short term, maybe even as early as next week, we'll see. Is to do this tour. So the sightseeing part, we can fly over in a helicopter. It has been a while since I've been in the Bell 47. I'm sure I'm super rusty. So, But after we do the sightseeing, we can actually take the DC-6 for the longer flights. So it's like a bit of combination. Yeah, it's a bit of sightseeing with a helicopter and then a, an airliner or another plane which can do the longer hauls because there are legs which are like 478, 500 miles and stuff like that. So we'll see. We'll see how it works. <clears throat> do, you, do you fly with passengers? Anyone want to fly together? I'm not sure if I have multiplayer on. I think I turned it off because there's a possible bug right now. You could get a crash if someone else is flying a DC-6. I think, oh, we might not be able to do multiplayer right now. But fine, we'll make it work. Good. So that's the update. Let you get back to chat here. Going to cook egg sandwiches. Here goes Jack again, making everyone hungry. Yeah, it's a bit tricky, isn't it, Tom? It's not intuitive at all. You get an update. You get an update from Steam or the Microsoft Store, so you update the actual package. Once you enter the, the game, the sim, there's another update, then that's automatic. And once you enter into the main menu, you have to update again. Find the world update from the marketplace, and so it's like updating three times. 
And the third one is the trickiest because it's not automatic. At least the first two you have to do it in order to continue. The third one you can actually skip it out and forget about it if you don't actively look for it. Quite tricky. <clears throat> Flying Donut Mod. <laughs> How the heck does that even work? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so this is the job we have. Go Coming from Iloilo, going to Jensan, General Santos. Yeah, that's the flight. We'll do the flight planning here because flight planning with this. So this plane is from the 1950s. Back then, no GPS. I think, I think no transition altitudes. A lot of things weren't there yet in the aviation world. And flying, creating a flight plan is very different back then. So we'll, we'll experience that here in the stream. We'll try it out for ourselves. And then the navigation, we'll try that as well when we fly the plane. Okay, lots of very uh, ambitious plans. If they come to fruition, we will see. But either way, we are all in for the ride. Donut mod with sprinkles. <laughs> okay, when he's back, we'll, uh, we'll ask him to talk about that. Don't burn yourself. Yeah. All right, so let's do this. Let's go to the aircraft. Um, and you know what? Maybe let's load up the plane first because you guys want, I probably want to see how it looks like. Go to Iloilo, spawn in there. Um, there are two heavy gates here. Let's go and check that out. Oh, that doesn't look good. Lifetime, live weather. Hopefully it's not bad as bad as it looks. Let's load it up. And while that's working, let me catch up with chat. Things might hang for a bit, but hopefully nothing crashes. As the sim loads. How big are the mods? They can vary immensely. Gigs. From hundreds of MB to gigs. Don't mention the word donut. <laughs> Is someone getting hungry? I saw that, Tom. Just the turbine itself is what you fly. My oh, goodness. People can be very creative, huh? You can hear a bit of the cabin there. Such nice attention to detail. All oh, those squeaks. <laughs> I don't see any clouds, but yeah, it looks like there is a storm somewhere. Oh, look at that wing. That doesn't look good. Do you already have an accident this early on? <laughs> I sure hope not. Let's have a closer look at that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, someone's upside down. One second. Uh, there you go. Let's reset that. All right. There you go. <clears throat> Z mod a plane to record. Oh, that would be a great idea. All right. Let's have a look here. <sighs> yeah, it's quite in there. Let's hope that doesn't cause any problems later. We might have to spawn somewhere else. But we'll see. We'll see. Looks like some over enthusiastic guys. But regardless, this is the plane. Looking pretty cool. Pretty old school. And you can tweak so many things with it there are lots of buttons and windows to tweak this is actually if you look at it it's the cargo version so there's a dc6a and a 6b this is the cargo version so you can see the number of windows are minimal as compared to the typical plane passenger plane that you might have be seeing more often you only have four windows on each side which is understandable i guess as Mrs. Clumsy said, the boxes don't really need to have a view, right? <laughs> they don't need to look out the window. So let's go ahead and open all the doors. See how that looks. There you go. All the cargo base opening bit by bit. You can even hear this slow motion opening. That sounds pretty cool. Nice paint job. Yeah, this is the default one from PMDG. I like it. There is a Philippine Airlines one. Uh, the one that they made the video on yesterday, but it's only for the passenger version. 
And for on air, definitely the cargo version is much more profitable. It's lighter because it doesn't have all those chairs. So the empty weight, the operational empty weight, starting weight of the plane is lighter. Understandably, you don't have the chairs and other passenger specific equipment. So you can load more stuff in and you can earn more from it. There you go. And you also have the stairs from the front. And this is where I would assume the pilots would come in from. Pretty nice. Not too shabby. The cool thing as well, if I remember correctly, is if we look here, it's empty, right? Oi. Sometimes the controls are a bit lagging with the, the, the drone. So it's empty, but this actually reflects depending on what you load in the the plane. So in the weight stuff here, you can see, I'm not sure if you can see that, but you can set up the fuel and you can set up the cargo. And if we put even like, I don't know, 10 pounds of cargo, how does it look outside? Oh, that's even reflected. So you see some boxes in here now, right? The interior. So, so they actually get loaded. And the more you fill in the, the plane, the more you fill it up. If I can get back to my own screen. There you go. And second. The more boxes are added as well. That is such a nice attention to detail. Granted, the boxes themselves don't have the highest texture. Um, but if you fill that up to the brim in this guy, so you get all the cool stuff filled in in all the cargo holds as well because there's one more here at the bottom. That's how you earn money, filling it to the brim. <laughs> hey, wise man, how's it been? Yeah, what have you been busy with these days? Thanks for following Pro Tools and guys let me know if the overlay is working. Okay, hopefully it is. Thanks for following Mega. How are you guys? Is something popping up at least? I'm not seeing it, but hopefully it's there. Let me know, okay? So a South African flag. Which one? Is it that one? Or... I guess that's the one I'm not familiar with. Filled with RTX 3000 series cards. Those are your GPUs, guys. <laughs> Those are your GPUs. Oh, wait. Well, some of them are actual crates and some of them have this like usual packaging that we see. I'm not sure how you call them. Like all uh, bundled up and sealed. Next to the USA. Ah, that one indeed. Cool. Yeah, so I guess there are, there are South African airliners before which were hauling the DC-6. Pretty nice, huh? Yeah, so that's some nice attention to detail there. Anyway, alright. So with that, let's get into the... Well, it's interesting for me. I'm not sure if it will be interesting for you, but give it a chance. The flight planning part. <clears throat> so, here's the world map and we are all the way here in the Philippines, my neck of the woods. This is how the Philippines looks like for those who are not familiar. And we are specifically starting off in, is it, you can see, you see it from here already? Um, if, if I can remember where that is. <laughs> here, here, yeah, there it is. Iloilo is where we're starting off from. Yeah, this guy here. And we'll be going southeast to Mindanao here to Jensan. But anyway, so this is cool in all the world map view, but the more functional side of Navigraph, and I think it's perfect for VOR planning like this, is the low end route. Hey, relax. Thanks for the bits, man. Welcome back. How have you been? Still flying in the Philippines. Busy with work, school, and farm sim. Yes, that is thunder. There are thunderstorms in the vicinity. Looks like so we'll have to be very careful. So all these lines, all these circles, this is what we will need to plan our flight. So let's start something new. New flight. And we cannot just use SimBrief for this. Usually we use SimBrief and it has routes pre-planned for us because SimBrief by default uses GPS. 
and this is the no GPS challenge stream, right? Because we want to mimic how the plane navigates back in the day. So we will have to plan it ourselves this time. So that's, those are the IKEA codes for the origin and destination airport. <clears throat> so just looking at it from a straight line, that's how it looks. But we'll have to look for VORs along the way. Because the VORs, don't ask me what the acronym means, those are the ones that we are tracking. The plane is able, capable of tracking those, knowing how far it is from them, at what angle it's approaching the, these uh, VORs from. And using that, we will be able to know if we are headed the right direction or not. So that's the plan. We'll see. All right, Calvin. Have a good night. Thanks for dropping by. 2 a.m. Goodness, Clem. Very late there, huh? Great to hear. Relax. I am excited to fly with you guys as well. Super excited, especially of the takeoff as we hear the engine. But we'll get there. We'll get there. I've been watching Fabio recently. I only recently discovered him. You guys might know him, the Flying Fabio. He's the guy who got the DC-6 in advance before its release. So a lot of people have discovered him, including me. He's a great guy. I learned a lot from him. Even the streaming side. And one of the things I learned is don't rush things, you know. Oftentimes we get comments like, when are you taking off? We're still on the ground. We still haven't started. Like, but the general thing I learned is, what's the rush? Let's enjoy every step of the process. It's amazing. It's nerdy. I like it. It's geeky. So let's take our time and just appreciate every little bit of it. All right. So we start off in Iloilo and um, basically I'm going to look for airways and VORs. So the, the lines and the circles. <laughs> and uh, here we have something. So we want to go southeast. In, we are starting from Iloilo right here. Iloilo itself has a VOR, so we'll be using that to navigate and uh, know how to depart from the area, the, the vicinity. So we'll be using that as a starting point, definitely. But after that, where do we go? Um, so something along these lines. And this one, looks like there's a VOR here, Bacolod. VOR, this guy. 115.3. So we can, if we add that to root, then that updates accordingly, right? Looks good. So from there, we trace more to the east or southeast, going there. And we don't have a lot of options in here. We have some VORs, but they're not part of the airways. And I would want to stick with the airways as much as possible just for easier um, radial uh, tracking. Because these airways, they have a degree already there. The course is already put out for you. So you kind of have a guide already. You don't have to, have to manually figure out the the heading, the course that you have to take. You can follow the airway itself. So it's easier for me. So that one is a VOR in Mactan, Cebu. If you guys are familiar, Cebu is one of the famous places in the Philippines. One of the best places to eat. Oh my goodness, the Cebu Lechon is... Uh, world famous i believe all the salt you can imagine <laughs> it's so good 114 decimal three let's add that as well there you go so we are progressing and then we go trace these lines see which ones will lead to a vor we can either go here to butuan that was that's a whiskey one for airway so that's possible or there is a one here that goes southeast davao is there one that goes direct to where we are coming from? Uh, not really, because there is a line, if you trace this guy here. But if you see, there is like an intersection in here, and then it kind of changes the course. Uh, and that is, a, that is an intersection, but that's like a GPS and RNAV intersection. So we, so it's not possible for us to track that using the VOR. Well, it is possible, I guess, but it's not very, it's quite tricky. It's not actually, we have to work, do with workarounds for it. So we can't use this line, but we can check the one southeast, I think. Hey, Arianus, glad you could join. We'll definitely be able to use a lot of your insights here. How are things, man? Dream of crap echoes. <laughs> oh, 
else everyone doing? There you go, BFR and IFR. Thanks for the insights, Arianas. With the FR rules, you do not need to fly by VORs about visual. Yeah. I'm not I'm not, I'm not planning to fly VFR. Yes, IFR for this guy right here. Although I won't be using ATC. Pilot ATC works, but it's not the most optimal for the DC6. It's a bit more oriented towards the modern airliners just because of the descent rate and the it, it, this plane behaves very differently. And sometimes the pilot to ATC, it's not, um, I mean, it works, but it's it doesn't give that much added immersion. So I'd rather just stick to flying on our own and following the VORs. So let's see if we can track this one. Insert after, uh, after Mactan. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. So it's a bit not straight line. We have to circle around a bit. Actually, that's possible, huh? Going straight to Cotabato here. Oh, that's okay. Let's take the scenic tour. I want to fly over Cebu. Must be nice over flying. And that's the great thing about this airliner as well. Because it's pretty old school. It doesn't fly as high as with the modern airliners. It has a very different engine, right? Piston. It's not a turbine engine. So the, the, the level you fly at, the altitude, is much lower. Like the modern airliners we have, what? Flight level... Like 30,000 feet, 20,000 feet. This guy, for us specifically, with these shorter routes, we're only be going to be flying at around 13,000 feet above. So that means more sightseeing opportunities because the ground is closer. We get to see a lot more details. So that's an advantage, actually, from our end. All right, so that looks good. And from there, we'll then think about the... Uh, departure and approach so we'll see normally navigraph already has suggestions for us for which departures to take so it saw that we were going to the bacolod vor here so it is recommending to bacolod you have these departures already and the tricky thing i'm not sure arianus if there's a standard here i guess it depends per airport but usually airports would have like a an RNAV only departure. Yeah, like like this one. It says RNAV departures. So you, you, we cannot use that. We don't have RNAV. We don't have GPS. So, but we can probably use these other ones. So we can try and see this Bacolod 3 Alpha and 3 Bravo here. And yes, it does look perfect for our needs. 13k feet is around 4.3. <laughs> Good to know. <clears throat> yeah, South Africans. Nice. <clears throat> How are things, Arianas? Been busy recently? Glad you could join today. It's a bit late there, isn't it? And how's the... Oh, where did you go? Georgia. Lots of photos. Thanks for sharing them. So yeah, this is a VOR departure, definitely. So we'll be tracking Iloilo VOR 116.3. We'll be departing from either runway. And then it has a... Uh, we'll uh, climb to uh, 1,000 feet. And then we will be turning towards the indicated heading. Either 173 or 055 depending on which runway we pick. And either of those we will be following the 097 radial. For this VOR. So we... The VOR is right on the airport. We look at, from this point, 97 degrees. So that's like almost eastbound, right? Going to the east, to the right like this. So that's 97 degrees. And just draw a straight line from that, that point. Like that. And that's what we will be intercepting. So we'll be joining that radial. That's what that means. And then we have an altitude restriction here. Actually, uh, yeah. This is my main concern. If you're like a, one of those modern airliners, an A320, even a CRJ, this is not a problem at all, right? At or above 5,000 feet by this point, that says D15, the ME15, that's 15 miles from the VOR here, from the airport. 15 miles from the airport, modern planes can go way above 5,000 for sure. But this DC6, 
I found, especially with a fully, almost fully full load, because we're, we want to earn the most money, so we're filling it to the brim. 5,000 feet in 15 miles is stretching it, really stretching it. So I'm not sure, we might have to like, I don't know how you do it, Arianus, if you have ever had that problem before in real life, where you couldn't meet an altitude restriction. I guess somehow you'll have to inform ATC and tell them I can't meet that, and then maybe they'll ask you to do one turn, just to do a climbing turn, get a bit of altitude before you get there, or hold somewhere. I don't know, maybe that's that, but we can mimic that if in case we don't meet that. Right, so we'll try to follow this as well, as close as possible. And then we get to Bacolod in there. Ooh, upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. <laughs> nice, this is, that's for our FBO. Uh, we're a Puerto Princess of FBO. Got an upgrade. Finished the upgrade. All right, looks good. And then 16 miles from there, we'll be reaching the Bacolod VOR. And then from there, we'll navigate accordingly. But yeah, this looks good. So let's pick... Um, well, the thing is, we're not sure which runway to use. But what we can do is consult little nav map here. <clears throat> George of's wonderful. Vacation is long over. Ah, I see, I see. <laughs> I can imagine. Seemed like you had lots of fun. Hiking, eating. Perfect combination in my books. Alright, so we're right here. But yeah, I think because we have the, the no GPS challenge, it's good if we tur actually turn off the, uh, the uh, aircraft so we don't see where we are. Yeah. And uh, right now, it looks like one last look because we need the winds information. Winds are coming from the southwest, so runway 20 is the best runway for that. Although 2 knots is barely anything, so, but let's, let's keep it safe. Maybe it will go get stronger later on. So runway 20 it is, and uh, because normally you would look at the weather here. Show information, you see it here. But it says here, no one nearest weather is uh, Romeo Papa Victor Delta. So there's actually no weather itself in this airport. And it's just basing the information it's giving you from the nearest one, which is, I think, somewhere here in the southeast, Dumaguete. I can't remember which one. Yeah, it's this one. So like 100 miles away is the nearest weather. And I'm not sure if that's going to be accurate. Yeah, not quite. So I'd rather look in the sim itself in this case. <clears throat> okay, that looks good. So we know that we are runway 20, but they, let's have a look at the destination. Maybe we can look already at the weather there. Okay, the weather, there is a weather, uh, um, what do you call it? Weather information in here. So if you look at Jensan, looks like runway 35 is better. So we have 020, at five knots, variable three four zero to six zero. You can see by the the look of that line right there, right? That black line, where it's coming from. The winds are coming from the northeast. That means it's blowing to the to the southwest like that. And so that means because we want to always land facing the the wind towards the wind, runway three five would be better for us. Okay, we can work with that. So runway two zero and three five. I think that's the extent of what we'll be using um, nav uh, little nav map today. So runway 20 and this guy, runway 35. Oh, look at this. That's perfect. There's a view R approach. Now that R nav approach definitely will not work for us. We don't have GPS. But the view R, I think that can work for us. 20. Oh, no, 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 no. Not that. That's a different airport. Approach 35. What's the difference between a Zulu and a Yankee? I always get confused with these. I know they have different minimums. One is higher, but I can never remember which one. And in this case, actually, it's the same. It looks like this is used for smaller aircraft, just from the looks of it. Because it's it looks tighter. 
Hmm. This one has no final approach fix. This one has. Oh, I think I like the other one better. Zulu. So this one is saying from Tumblr, VOR, 114.5, decimal five, will follow the 142 radial, this line right here, for 8 miles. That's the D8.0 there. And once we reach 8 miles, we'll turn left. And then we will uh, intercept the 352 course towards the VOR. And then at 8.2 DME, we'll start our descent, a 3 degree descent there. Which in our case, a 3 degree descent based on your speed would equate to the following vertical speeds, feet per minute. Okay, we'll see how that works, but that looks promising. Okay, let's let's see how that works. Um, but first, arrival. Do we need an arrival? Let's see. Megum, these are this. These all look like Arnav arrivals to me. Let's have a look. Megum, yeah, that's an R and B, but this guy maybe can work. Yeah, that one is Megum. And you do have radials in here. So let's say Megum 1. At Megum, track in on... Uh, what's the SA? Tumblr. 028 radial. 028 course. Interesting. Approach procedure labeled Zulu will always have lower landing minimums than Yankee. Ah, okay, okay. Makes sense. One is usually for turboprop, second for airliners. Yeah, not to hit the minimum climb requirements. I know, right? Yes, very different problem we're, you're uh, needing to understand now. So the... How would you know if it's for turboprops or airliners? I guess there would be some kind of indication in the chart. Maybe I have to read it better. Okay, so one... How do we know that we are at Megum if we don't have a GPS system? I guess the best we could do is count the DME. Because this is the VOR. And if we look at the distance, so that's 15 miles for this leg, that's the 15 right there. This is 10, so that's 25. And then this guy is 18. So 25 plus 18, 35, 43. So at 43 DME, we are at Megum. That's the best I can offer. I guess that can work. Uh... Why not? Okay, Megum 1. There you go. We do have those lines here as well. 25 plus 18, that is 30, 43. Okay, it's consistent, right? It's consistent. Nice. And then from there, we can do the... Uh, yes, exactly. It knows already that smart navigraph. The VORDME Zulu, runway 35. Perfect. Okay, so we have the approach, the arrival set, the, just the departure is left. And here we have uh, runway 20 is what we want. So we have two going to Bacolod. It's either the Bacolod 1 Sierra or the Bacolod 3 Bravo departure. RNP definitely not that one. That's the wrong airport again. Let's go back to the right airport. No wonder I can't find it. The interface can be quite clunky sometimes, but for the most part it works. So Bacolod 3A and 3 Bravo, that's the one. Bacolod 1 Sierra. You guys see that? It's probably this one of these RNAV departures. So just have a look. Let's see. Yeah, that's Pacolod 1 Sierra in here. Pacolod 1 Sierra. You can see basic RNP 1 required. That's the, I guess that's the technical um, GPS device that you would need. And we don't have any of that. So this is not applicable for us. So we'll pin that one. We'll choose the Pacolod 3 Bravo one. It's perfect. 
and uh, looks good let's have a look at the airport as well looking good there and uh, take note I also removed this part because we could see where we are on the map but we can turn it off as well so that it makes it more immersive right there is no cheating you have to know where we are okay looking good is anyone still there sorry for boring <laughs> we're not uh, into this kind of things but my goodness I'm enjoying this a ton all right so that's the route we have and that's what we'll be feeding sim brief I love these end-to-end -end planning sessions just gives you the full picture what's there okay so we are departing from Iloilo to Jensan okay and I, I made a custom airframe to align the stats from on air just for easier um, stats easier numbers more consistent ones there you go and here we can just type in paste in the root uh, remove that guy and that guy analyze invalid for zero two no because we want two zero and three five two zero and three five analyze there you go now it's valid 383 nautical miles and then that looks like the same map that we've put in cool good awesome all right now next step is to align on air with sim brief because we have some weights that we have to take care of so that's this guy right here douglas dc6a cargo at iloilo and we have a job that we can load up hey jenny glad to glad to see you join the stream glad to see you in twitch oftentimes we catch each other on youtube all right so we have twenty-five thousand pounds to load up 25418 help me remember that one guys 25418 okay so 25418 uh let's put it at 25.5 so i'll put the cargo in here 25.5 and then passengers will be zero right and that we have a route we have our weights generate the ofp so the sim brief will now calculate do its maths tell us the best um, altitude and how much fuel it will take planned optimum flight level that sounds good to me look at that cruise altitude is just flight level 110 now i did notice sometimes that this is a bit wonky so we'll have to double check that because if we zoom in here you'll see that next to these airways there is a number here it says 7000 there is this 9000 and i think correct me if i'm wrong that is the minimum altitude when you are on those airways so we cannot go lower than those and look at this one this is flight level 130 so i'm not sure why sim brief is not seeing that because it does seem like we should be at flight level 130 right based on that thing there so maybe it's not taking into account airway minimum altitudes so just to make it a bit more accurate you can force it to say well 110 might be optimal but i want to be cruising at flight level 1300 something like that 130 rather 1300 is pretty high good approach code is always from a to z a to z a is most obsolete and z is super modern ah interesting ah that is great i had never thought of it that way that is very insightful thank you can stay long finish finish it up with flight awesome <laughs> thank you for dropping by appreciate it <clears throat> all right there we go uh -huh. takeoff weight is eighty-five thousand. oh we'll not be able to get to use the the wet takeoff i want to do that though can we because there is a criteria when you use a dry and wet takeoff basically dry takeoff is like what is the equivalent derating your engines like go, not going full power basically or you could say dry takeoff is going full power wet takeoff is fuller power <laughs> one step one notch more and that means the engines will be screaming more with the wet takeoff so i want to do that 
but normally you would only do the wet takeoff when you're that heavy, when you're beyond 86,700 takeoff weight, I think. Something like that. And we didn't reach that criteria. But maybe we can do it for science, right? Maybe we can uh, just, you know, for, for the ASMR. Why not? So let's uh, do a wet takeoff anyway. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's uh, start here first. So the, the fuel that Simbrief planned is 7,200 pounds of uh, <clears throat> what do you call the fuel again the 100 uh, ll thingy avgas right uh -huh. and actually the flight itself will only take 3871 and the 518 pounds there's a final reserve of 1500 but there's also an extra 1000 pounds if we need to do if we need to divert to our alternate which is davao uh this guy Romeo, Romeo Papa Mike Delta yeah. but so far looks good 7207 we can handle that so let put that on the left Navigraph let me put on the left as well 7207 so let's fuel here we do have our own fuel in here from Clumsy Air and I'm just looking at this fuel here that's this side 7207 that guy 7355 a bit beyond that's fine we can work with that so load it up and load it up load up the cargo load up the fuel there you go that will take a few minutes two minutes to load up the fuel but that should be fine and at the same time let me fill that up again because i consumed some fuel then i will have to order some from the supplier so we can restock that fbo really love that aspect of on air if you want the actual management side it's very nice okay so we are saying look at that we are we only have 338 gallons i think that's gallons left because we consume the rest so let's order some more looks good and that's done and then on this side what i'll be doing i turned off the realistic procedures because this plane is not able to detect the beacon lights it's not syncing the beacon light so on air will always penalize you Say you don't have beacons on even if you do. So I just turned it off for now. <clears throat> Let's take the job. Hey MW, what happened to the thunder there? Kind of. <laughs> Thanks for joining. How are you? Right on time, we are <clears throat> just about to start. <clears throat> Finished flight planning. <clears throat> and now we are about to fly, finally. Uh, uh, Mike Romeo and yes the alternate this time is the same wow that doesn't happen often good okay so let's synchronize that uh -huh. let me put in let's go inside here let's align this let me zoom in there so we're saying we have 7207 okay so we can do that here 7,216, that's close enough. And that means in terms of where the fuel is loaded, based on that short trip, we only need them on the main tanks. There is some more uh, science that goes on this, with this main and alternate tanks. There's a certain step, certain process on how you switch tanks, and it's not just a simple switch. There are a couple of switches that you have to do. I haven't gotten to that yet because I always take these short flights which don't really require the alternate tanks. So maybe we'll get into that more eventually. Alright, on air 25418 cargo. So let's uh, say here fly now. That will then load up and try to detect where we are. So you will see in terms of the fuel. Yeah, that looks close enough. So it says check there. I don't auto set this because I don't want on air to fiddle with what I set in the sim. Payload is still a little bit heavy though because it's not aligned with what we have in sim brief, with what we have carrying with us. We need only 25,546. So let's do that in the sim. 25,546. So that means the main cargo hold will be filled and then the low cargo hold will be around, I don't know. 2,000 maybe 
25, 5, 4, 6, something like that. Let's have a look at on air again. 25, 6, 2, 3. Yeah, that's close enough, right? Close enough. Start tracking. Let me put that here on the left. So it doesn't get bogged down with the rest of us. Cool. Awesome. Everything is finally set. And now we can start our plane. <clears throat> Start and alternate the same when, when you had engine failure with 7. <laughs> I think I remember that. Oh my goodness, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't happen here because I would not know. I have not studied any emergency procedures. How it works here. Just press B here to align with the local QNH. And we are going to make use of our flight engineer. I asked for comments, for um, suggestions on what we should give what name we should give the guy and i like the suggestion call him doug he said i was like why doug doug for douglas you know he has his name right there so why not <laughs> so let's call him doug from now on and doug will be helping us with all the steps because i wouldn't be able to manage that on my own you know how long it took us to do that flight plan Multiply that by 5 or by 10 for me to go through the manual and flick each of these switches. So we'll make use of Doug in this case. Let's just look at what he's doing. Turning on the generators, turning on the battery, ground power, seat belt signs, emergency, exit lights and whatnot. Tasted. Tasted. <laughs> That's what I always hear about. Fuel and fluids. Checked. Fuel tanks are here. Pressurization. Set. Manifold and duct pressure. Checked. Radios. Opens the radios. Pretty cool, Checked. right? Doors and hatches. It's a good way to learn, actually. And now he's even going to close our doors for us. All the hatches and doors he'll be doing. Isn't that cool? And then eventually as we learn these steps, I can take them down. I can note them down. And we just have to follow what he's doing. Penguin air all the way. Oh my goodness, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Might be not the safest approach, huh? Forward and three. Before start checks complete. Start nice. Alright. Guys, ready to start engines? Not yet, because we have to open the windows for that. Yes, we can open windows here. So we get a louder bang from these radial engines. Should we max out the engine sound? I'm not sure if it's something that you guys would like, but probably, huh? Let's just tone that down later. Right now it's at 60. Power! <laughs> let's go all out. Okay, let's see. Uh, how do we start this? I've been learning this. It's very interesting. Now the artificial flight engineer, aka Doug, he only takes us to before start. But the actual start of the engines we'll have to do ourselves. So it requires a bit more manual steps here, which is great. Is there smoke on startup? Yeah, I don't think there is. Where should the smoke be uh, getting exhausted from? Where is the exhaust here? At the back, somehow, of each of the engines? Yeah, that's a good point. But we'll go and go for the next best thing which is going to fixed camera and looking at those engines themselves there the black streaks right behind the cowl flaps okay you'll have to guide me here uh let's see where that is let's go and find that first the cowl flaps would be this is very educational for me if i can move that the drone mode is 
oftentimes getting pretty laggy. Just interesting. Oh, that view, isn't it? That view looks amazing. Nitty gritty. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually just touching the surface with this one. I need a lot of automation and assistance still, but yes, it's all pretty cool. Is, are these the cowl flaps in this plane? <clears throat> and then the black streaks are these guys? I guess those are like suit or something. Ah, I see. So we'll have to take note later how that looks once we start taking off because during takeoff the cowl flaps are kind of more close than they are when on the ground it's pretty cool oh yeah, yeah that, that explains it why there are all these black suits okay good uh, let's not touch that let's go to external two all right let's do it Oh, let me try and remember. So what the what Doug did for us, he actually set engine selector to three, and then he also enabled the boost pump for engine three here to low. And we can double check that by just checking here where my mouse is. I might be hiding it in my screen, huh? The fuel pressure is there. Let me move the camera. That guy, fuel pressure. So they have one, two, three, four. Engine three has fuel pressure already. That's a good sign. And from there, we can start the engine here using the both the start and safety together. You can see it says operate together. So it's like clicking them like that. You can hear. Three, six. It's spinning. Nine. Nine blades, both 12. boost prime. You can hear it catching. And then we introduce fuel. That's the one. I didn't see any smoke. But then again, I was busy inside the cockpit. Oil accumulation in the bottom cylinders. Let's have a look here. Yeah, I, I saw that they even have that... Um, where was it? can't do it now but they have this engine oil pan because the oil is actually dripping so if you enable that there will be like a basin at the bottom here <laughs> pretty cool pretty old school you can even see the actual what they call it the the thing shaking almost like wanting to come off <laughs> pretty nice all right so we have engine 3 which is good Let's go and start engine 4 here. Engine selector 4, fuel pressure low. Double check that the fuel pressure has come up. And let's double check that the oil pressure has come up for engine 3. It's there. That looks good. The oil, even the oil temperature, guys, is simulated properly. You can see there's a red line there on the 40. That is because when you're uh, operating these engines, it has to be above 40 before you try and rev them up. So right now, the RPM on engine 3, you can see this here, is around, what is that, around 600 RPM. So that's okay. We have to stay below 1000 RPM when it's still cold. So we have to let the oil temperature uh, warm it up. Because it, if it's cold enough, it's too, uh, what do you call it, viscous. It's too uh, gooey. And it doesn't travel well inside the engine. So we have to heat it up so that it lubricates and cools down the engine properly. That's at least what I understood. Feel free to fact check me at any of those points. Okay, but that engine four looks good. Let's start up engine number four. Exactly, Cat Monty, three, four, two, one. Three. <laughs> yeah, the Six. details are amazing. Nine. Nine blades, both Twelve. boost prime. Here it catch, add some fuel, auto lean, auto rich. And it's not always going to work, I've heard. Sometimes, even if you do everything correctly, it still wouldn't start. And they just say that's the beauty of these radial engines, they're not that consistent. So we have oil pressure on engine number 4 as well. You can, I love this, you can see each of those needles kind of shaking with the engine, right? The entire cockpit shaking, even this, this metal... Uh, how do you call it? This this uh, container here, screwed up like that. 
it's still shaking everything <laughs> it's amazing okay that looks good engine 2 next low fuel pressure rising we have fuel pressure <clears throat> start up and the, the the countdown that you're hearing I guess that's dog counting he's looking outside his window and counting the blades so because when you start this when you crack this the blades start spinning and then I think he counts like the number of blades that are passing through that he's seeing so one two three four five let's say he says three six nine and we're doing that because from what I understand what is it the oil is at the bottom of the engine initially and you want to spin the engines first so that that kind of gets distributed all across before you introduce any fuel or whatnot so you don't want it sitting at the bottom you want it to circulate a bit that's why you're not introducing fuel immediately something along those lines it's pretty interesting Three, six, so we get to nine blades five, turn on the ignition the spark 12. and introduce fuel right there there you go Ooh, there's a plane right there that's pretty cool that's live traffic guys live traffic Yes, three, four, two, one would be the recommended uh, approach. That's what, yeah, that's what Alex says. Oil accumulation in the bottom cylinders. Cold oil is like marshmallow in engine. There you go. <laughs> MD eleven, not yet, I think, but I think someone is working on it. MD eleven is that the one with the triple engines? I think that's a very famous plane, right? crack through before startup if you don't uh, you can hydraulic the engine basically blowing a cylinder head off yikes oil will not compress hey captain kj good morning no multiplayer um because right now there is a bug with the dc6 if you have multiplayer on and someone else is flying the dc6 your game your sim will crash so it's not able to like I don't know what the bug is, but uh, PMDG is working on it. They have a fix in mind. I think it, the patch will be released very soon. But right now, if you want to fly the DC6, uh, it's not. It's a no-go with multiplayer. I'm not even sure if your sim will crash if you just see. If you're flying a different plane, but someone else is flying the DC6, if your sim will crash as well. I'm not sure about that angle. But if, if it is, then I guess we would hear a lot more complaints, right? Alright, that's uh, engine 2. Last but not least, engine 1. Fuel pressure looking good. The oil pressure on 3 and 4 are quite low. I'm not sure if that's normal. Look here. Oil pressure on 2, engine 2 is almost at 50. Oil pressure on 3 and 4 is way lower now. But maybe that's because it's warmed up. Does that make sense? The warmer it gets, the more stable the oil pressure goes. We'll have to check. On one side, this is pretty cool. The engine stress visualizer helps you know if something is wrong. If something goes orange or red, you're doing something wrong. If it's yellow, then it's more or less okay. The warmer the oil is, the less the pressure will... Ah, that makes a lot of sense. So that we are right on track there. Because yes, we can see the oil temperatures here for engines 3 and 4. Because they've started along already, a while ago. They're well above 40 now, so it's safe to operate them. And yes, as a result, the oil pressure has come down. Amazing detail, right? Amazing detail. And I, I knew nothing of these before. And now I'm learning. Learning a lot. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, one second. Well, fuel pressure on engine one is good. Let's do this. Three. Six. Nine. Five. Twelve. I inverted that by accident. I'm not sure if it will work. It does. It does work. I think. 
it would be nice to see them start on their own right someone else take care and just watch that would make it more immersive but don't worry we'll uh we'll make up for it during takeoff because during takeoff doug will be taking care of pushing the throttles forward so that means we can stay outside and just look at the view appreciate the view and the sounds and i'll have it max the sounds and then you guys let me know when it gets too loud and we'll adjust it accordingly okay but yes look at this one the oil temperatures are so far from each other we started three first and then four and then two and then one and that reflects perfectly here engine one is super cold still and the pressure reflects that accordingly exactly to what alex is saying the warmer the oil temperature the lower the oil pressure pretty consistent on that end and you have fuel pressure everywhere looks good but now we don't need the boost pumps anymore actually doug can do all of this for us but i like flicking the buttons if i'm familiar with them and now that we have power our generators are on we have all engines running you can actually switch from ground power to plane battery without the plane losing electricity cool good that's the extent of what i know with the buttons so the rest doug will have to take care start so after start off and off battery switch plane battery i did that already generators and inverters and on. Emergency Ooh. lights. Armed. Armed. Ground power. I remove the ground power. Oh, I didn't hear him. I think he would. He he probably needed to say uh, after start checks complete or something along those lines. Okay. Let's close the windows here. I did find that there was a bug with windows, and I saw that Fabio also had that. If you don't close them while you're removing, they could bug out for you. Actually, I think we got the bug now. Oh, we have the bug, guys. It's going to be tricky. Because this bug can actually cause your plane to crash. Cause the black screen when you're overstressing it. So we actually have windows closed here. If you, if you hear it, if I try to close the windows, that sounds actually get louder. That's one of the bugs. Yes. Right? It's louder. So that means the sim is interpreting this that the windows are open. And when you fly with windows open at such a speed, the sim will not like it and you will go black screen. So that means for us, I think we have to open the windows open the windows but the sim will consider that as closed and we'll see if that gets fixed later yeah fabio had that in his stream as he took off black screen because of that inverted windows bug i hope PMG fixes it but they have been made aware of it because when that happened to him there was someone from the mdg team i think in that regard just checking my others here looking good brakes looking good all right now this thing has reversers and you can actually reverse with it literally so that red lever there flight simmer in sg oh yeah we are far and few are you from sg as well that's pretty cool singapore is sg at least the parking brakes and we are starting to move back. Good, KJ. That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's so nice to see. I don't see a lot of people from Singapore split in the simulator world, right? Neither in trucks nor in uh, trains, I think. Hmm, from what I've seen, the biggest simulator community in Singapore are the bus simulator fans. From what I've seen, at least. Oh, and I forgot something. Thank you for following. AJ, appreciate that. Are the alerts working, guys? Did someone pop up next to my face? That should be working now, I think. <laughs> I know, right, Tom? I was kind of hoping that we don't get into that. I'm going outside. It's going to get noisy. I love those yellow 
outlines of the propeller. Yes, you can actually see that through here. One second, I cannot move. Yeah. Very true. Props reverse pitch. That's the one. And then we'll get the engine harmonics. You can see everything is shaking at a certain RPM range. The engines don't like it and so they shake like crazy and everything else shakes with them. That should be around the 1250 to 1600 RPM range where those harmonics trigger. So we should stay should uh, stay away from that as much as possible. Shaking, yeah, right? Check your mirrors. Doot, 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 doot. <laughs> All right, one sec. Let me start tuning in the VORs here. So you don't want to miss that. 116 decimal 3 is the one in Iloilo. The next one will be Bacolod, which is 115 decimal 3. And we'll do the opposite here. 115 decimal 3 will be the active one. And then the one on standby will be 116 decimal 3. And we'll know if both are being captured, if both are active there. And you can see the DME here. That's the distance from the VOR. So from VOR1, we are 0.3 mass away. From VOR2, VOR2 is not able to detect yet. Just fine because we're at the ground. Parallel park. First flight to the DC6 on stream. Everything green. Not doing anything utterly bad at least. Alright. My goodness. This might be get hitting very loud later on, guys. So one sec, let's review the departure departure so we will be departing from runway 20 that means we will have this kind of heading right at or above 1000 we will turn left towards a 055 heading and then we will intercept the 097 radial of the VOR that means over here we have to prepare ready we have to set 097 on this 097 course so I'm looking at 09 9 there that's 90 and that line in the middle is 95 6 7 that's probably close enough right so later on i will use this to know if we are on that 97 radial already or not looks good all right push the throttles just a bit and i'll let you see how the harmonics are looking like Kowalski report iPhone 12 where this guy look at how the cabin shakes inside those ra that range 1250 to 1600 and once you get past that 1600 everything just stabilizes right Ooh, don't hit that guy look as we can enter that range again It's amazing. It's amazing. Look at that. The window's automatically closed. Well, at least this side. That side is not yet. There you go. So, yeah, I'm not sure. But we'll just leave it like that. One of the quirks. So let me load up Navigraph on my left side here so I'll try and remember that. 055. Turn left towards 055 and intercept the 097 radial. Because we will be hand flying this, at least in the beginning. The automation in this plane is minimal. Not a huge chunk of automation. Runway 20 is there on the right, so we'll have to do a back taxi. We'll have to turn to the right and then make a U turn basically and then we can get to hear the engines fully right 
Let's go in taxi. Oh my goodness, it's shaking all over. And what's cool is actually, if you go to the maintenance manager, there's actually some persistence here. So as you fly the plane, it logs your hours, number of hours. It logs the engine health. So that wear and tear, if you're not taking care of your engines properly, it will remember that. And eventually, your engines will, like you can see the colors here, they will deteriorate. Now you can easily repair them. There's a button here that says repair. But I mean, that's a very good indication if you are taking good care of your engines or if you're stressing them out, right? So long term, those things that you do, those little things that you do will all add on top of each other, whether that's sensible and healthy for the engine or not. And I like that. Quite nice. Um, before takeoff, please. First pops. First pops on low. Fuel selector and crossfeed. Main Line takes and off. And crossfeed off. Autopilot and carbid. Autopilot is off. off. And cold. Hydraulic system. Down. Down. Forward. Pressure and quantity checked. Okay. Those are the brakes. Flaps 20. Squealy brakes. Flaps 20, that yellow thing is for the flaps. And the indication for the flaps is right there. So we can verify. And we can also Flaps check outside. It's going to get a bit loud. Flaps 20. Closed and on. Controls. Dust lock released. Free. Dust lock. That red thing. So if that gust lock is set, you cannot even on. move your flight controls. Mixture and cow flaps. Reach and locked. Set. Transponder. Transponder. Let's set that on. on as well here. Landing lights. And it will turn on the landing lights for us. Now this thing, not even sure if it has strobes. It has nav lights and nav lights that blink in and out the green and red lights but it doesn't have the strobes the, the, the white lights that are blinking i guess during that time strobes weren't a thing yet so i'm not sure what is the proper way back then of setting the lights up when you are airborne do you have the blinking nav lights i guess I'm not sure it's over here you have your Steady lights or position flash. So if you look here, yeah, those lights will just be blinking. I guess that's as close enough as we have to strobes. Alright, so we'll stay in the center line here. And we'll set our parking brake so we don't have to hold the brakes all. So normally I'll use my tow brakes to hold the position. But we want to go outside and hear this that yellow thing <laughs> close enough right all right so we'll do a wet takeoff just because we want to hear it scream and what will happen is the dog Doug will help us he will push forward the throttle to 30 inches of manifold pressure just to check if the engines are stable so that means we will hear the engines revving up a bit and you think it's done no that's only starting there that's only the warm-up once the engines are stable and at 30 he will push them forward all the way to 59.5 around this point here for a wet takeoff and the water pressure will uh, automatically trigger he'll turn those on but that means we'll hear the engines rev and no that's only warm up there is another revving well it where it will get even louder so I think because uh, oh this suddenly cut off because I think it might get too loud it might be better if we set that to 80 only it might be too much otherwise and then let's stay outside all right stay outside okay so let's trigger that wet take off wait a minute what position do we want to be in let's get that ready let's go with this position 
front view. This guy. Yeah, we'll be using water injection. I don't really need to because our weights are not that heavy, but it, it's cooler because the engines will be louder, I guess. Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not sure actually if they will be louder, but I hope so. <clears throat> so when that happens, the water injection here will actually, these lights will turn green once we get to a certain manifold pressure. Anyway, let's start it. Let's see how it works. We have the parking brake set, so we, we will not be moving, even if we go to drone mode. Water injection. So I'll turn those on. On. These guys. 30 inches stabilized. So now he'll be revving up. You can hear, you can see the throttles pushing forward. Right. RPM rising. Propeller spinning faster. There's 30. Those sounds. Let's go inside. Cal flaps. Cal flaps. Cal flaps set. Call flap set for takeoff. Power, now he's revving up again. Oh yeah, the count flaps are closed almost. There we are. Almost there. You can see the water injection, the green set. lights. Full power is set. There you go. Release the brakes and off we go. Now it doesn't seem fast, does it? It's such a heavy plane, <laughs> even with all that power. I can even hear like bottles clanking. Even with all that power, it still is pushing along quite heavily. Looks good. Okay, rotate very slowly. There we are. Buzzery, gear up. Yes, it I barely up. just lifts off the ground. So let's climb up to a thousand feet. Gear up, Pitching up. for Lots 130 up. knots. Going up. Doug is taking care of cleaning up the plane for us so we can focus on flying. At a thousand feet we will turn left. To uh, 055 heading. Meter power. Setting meter power 48 inches, 2600 RPM. Meter power. So it's. You can hear the engines turning down a bit. 1000, there we go. Start turning left. Look at how slow that is. Right? Meter like a power proper. Set. Heavy Going airliner. Power. Power. No sudden movements. Climb power. So now we pitch for 165 knots. Should see the airport shortly. Turning Clock left 055. Have to take off checklist, please. No fly-by-wire here, I know, right? Everything is, what is it, cables. And there's even a delay. When you pull the yoke, there's a bit of delay before the, the things take into effect. So tricky. Alright, 055 on the heading. That's almost this guy right here. You can center that up. That's close enough, 055, airport should be on our left, there it is. And the radial, you can see, should be... So that line right there, let me show you. Let me zoom in. So you can see that, that uh, so there's like a thick line and a thin line, right? That thin line, that's VOR1, you can see it moving ever so slowly. 
it's getting close to that 09 and remember we're joining the 09 or 7 radial so when that gets close this needle will get closer and I will start turning to the right to join that radial it's a bit hard to explain right now but just trust me on this <laughs> when that moves when that starts moving then it's time to turn to the right and join I hope it does there it is you see it moving so now we turn maybe it might have been a bit too late there so we'll have to compensate but that's fine Problem. so now we're joining the 09 or 7 radial exactly as planned and that sounds good There it is, that's not bad. Make sure we're still continuing the climb. Pitching for 165 knots. There it is, that's perfect. So now that we see that the, the lines are right in the center, that means we are following the VR, the radial that we set for it. I like that. Good, and now we're continuing our climb. Now we do have a marker here, 15 DME, you want to be at 5,000 feet or above. And right now we're at 6 DME. It's 15, okay, no problem, no problem. Yeah, 15 DME is no problem. We should be at 5,000 feet already now. So that's actually no issue. Cool. Right, so we can either hand fly that for the rest of the way or so that I can focus on something else. We can start turning on the gyro pilot here. There you go. That will maintain its current pitch for us. It's not really a full-blown autopilot, but it helps. So right now I'm shallowing out the climb, but it's very manual. Yeah, thankfully. Thankfully we reached it because in the, in one of the other airports I could not make the altitude constraint. I had to do one 360 turn so that I had enough time. <laughs> Thankfully here there was enough. Let's follow the VOR. Switch the localizer so that it will follow that radial on its own. So I switched from gyro pilot to localizer in there. Pretty cool. Turbo fan restriction, what do you mean? Man, well wires. Man, old school as it gets. Man, that base, huh? And look at that, the window's closed already. I think Doug take, took care of it for us. He fixed the bug. But yes, in case you encounter that on your own, just take note of that. Watch out. Alright, so we have... Let's review what we've done. Uh, Navigraph. So this is what we did. Departed from runway 20, took off from runway 20. And uh, turned left, 055. We joined the 097 radial. So we are right here now. 15 DME almost there so right before so we are somewhere here and we're headed straight to Bacolod VOR so after we reach that 15 DME another 16 miles gets us to the VOR so we can check that by once we reach 15 here we should be 16 from the other yeah perfect that's the VOR too that's Bacolod so once we reach 15, it should be almost around 16 on the other end. Yeah, close enough. And we should actually switch to that one. So I'll move to Gyro Pilot. Switch frequencies. So now we are tuning to the Bacolod VOR. There you go. And we'll just follow that. Uh, turn to the left just a bit. Ah, turbo fan restriction. I see, I see. Oh, so does it say in the chart that it's at four turbo fans? 
that would be great like for pistons there will be a different um, restriction that would make sense and I love that steady hum that vibration of the engine is it too loud guys I can turn it down if it gets too loud center that so now we are perfectly at 165 knots that's the climb speed we want steady rate 1000 feet per minute getting close to the VOR let's track that again looking good and now we are seeing that we are 11 miles away from that Bacolod VOR now if we review the plan so we should be somewhere here now I think no 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 the quality VR is here somewhere here so the next one is Cebu Mactan VR bite your tongue young man <laughs> hey Dwarfy how are you so Mactan here is 114 decimal 3 so let's start tuning for that already 114 decimal 3 and this guy let's actually tune it there already there you go so 114 decimal 3 there you go we got, uh, actually already detects that that thicker line there that's VOR2 and we are 72 miles away from that cool doing good man loving this plane let's go go outside it's get, going to get loud guys okay it's going to get pretty loud there it is all that beauty oh my goodness i love the reflections the metal parts i don't think planes are used with the same material anymore are they so I think nowadays the planes are made specifically for, how do you say, like to resist lightning strikes and whatnot. I'm not sure if those are still metal. I think they're some kind of composite. But we're getting close to the VR here and this is how we navigate. So if you look at Navigraph, from a uh, 116 radial or 2 liner 6, one second, not that one, this one. From that guy, we have to have a 116 course. 116 is the course to Cebu. So that means I want to switch over to Gyro Pilot so that the plane wouldn't follow the VOR. Uh, one second, guys. Huh? One second. about that okay so let's put now this to 116 so you can see that we're deviating from it but that's fine so that's 110 that's 115 that's probably 116 close enough and I think in this case this is where I'm still a bit not sure how you change courses and when you would change your heading towards a specific point but I think in our case we can wait for that line to come to us on its own and then we follow that new radial I'm not so sure no I think we have to turn right don't we yeah yeah there you go so at some point the VOR will not be tracked anymore. That's the cone of confusion, I think they call it. When you're right atop the VOR, you won't be able to track it. And then, now, it's on the opposite side. So we have to turn right to follow it. Yeah, that's something that I'm still working on. The, the uh, VOR to VOR transition. That's still a bit confusing to me. Also, it seems like I went beyond my climb. 
we should only be climbing up to 130 right we're already beyond it you can see all the manual stuff happening start descending a bit there let's track the localizer Set go to power cruise, power. cruise power and let's descend back to 130 all right have a good night arianus thanks man appreciate it composites yes proper steel and aluminum this one huh yeah that's why the reflections are very different makes sense there we go so let's descend back to 130 there's a mountain right in front of us it's pretty far off that's good cruise checks are complete good so now we're on the 116 radial more or less that looks good to me 6.8 56 miles from the next one so it's not automatic at all you have to really guide it every step of the way and it's just amazing <laughs> you can't like go afk you really have to be involved for each and every part now we can see here that the oil temperature is a bit hot but that's okay because we were climbing that should get colder later over here we have cowl flaps are closed zero so if we look outside this is closing if we look outside yeah those are closed deep. so it's like not flowering like that those vents here All right, almost at 130 now. Getting there. Once we are leveled, then I'll think about switching VORs again to Makta. Side that for a bit. So we'll get some nice scenes outside. There we go, 130. And with that, we should be able to hold the altitude with that knob. Altitude control or something along those lines. Not sure what the exact term is. Airspeed, indicated airspeed is around... What is that? 220 knots? But on the ground, we are actually traveling at 256 knots. Not too shabby too shabby okay looks good so let's see yeah we can start switching frequencies now let me move to gyro pilot switch over to Cebu let me double check with that Cebu Mactan 114 decimal 3 indeed and then the next one is Davao 112 decimal 1 Alright. So how's it looking? Yeah, doesn't look bad. Almost at the same rate there, 44 miles and joining. Looks pretty good. Ah sounds good, Joey. I think there's even a livery that comes with it, right? In the PMDG operation center. I think they have a scenery, they have a livery for Alaska. Not sure which airline it is. Everett's, that's the one. Which airports have you been delivering to? Yeah, it's also one of the great things about this aircraft. It can actually land on those smaller airports. I think effectively it only needs around 5,000 feet of runway. 
maybe even less. I think 5,000 is good enough. So that makes it pretty accessible. And you can deliver cargo to all those smaller airports. You don't have to have the biggest ones. It's pretty cool. Fairbanks to Emonac. Oh, nice. How long did that take? How far away is that? You know, the distance between those two airports. <laughs> I love the view from here. That one. Looks so good. Looking outside the window. Two hours, 440 miles. Well, that's not bad. Those are the kinds of flights that I like. Not too long. So I guess you didn't need to use your alternate. Huh? I, I'm not familiar how to use my alternate tanks yet. I know you use them to switch over to them during the cruise phase. But the things that you fiddle around here, like moving these, that's still a bit of a question mark to me. And yet you have to have like the proper uh, booster pump for the ones you are moving to, I think. But I don't want to worry about that yet because uh, maybe let's worry about that when we get there, when we need them. One sec guys, I'm getting a bit OCD here. I want to be exactly at 130. Actually we are, huh? Interesting. Okay, there you go. Real world flight crews at only 10,000 feet. They don't pressurize their cabin. Ah, maybe. But oh, I see. I see. It could be. In our case, we're at one three zero. Most of the flights I've done here in the Philippines are all on that range. At least that's what Simbrief gives me. I guess for shorter distances, it makes sense because having such a poor climb rate compared to modern aircraft, going that high is not advisable for shorter trips. Huh? Maybe. Window view. This is the window view, guys. Another window view from the back. Not too shabby. loud beautiful I'm not sure if they're working on a DC-3 yeah I think their next one is a 737 but yes plenty of things to study here let me show you the manual turn off track IR for now That's the guy. Look at that. 333 pages. <laughs> Light reading, exactly. <laughs> uh, they have the actual checklist here in section 5, I believe. This is what Doug was doing. Yeah, all of these. Switching on the buttons. And then they have some they have some charts as well yeah performance charts that is all beyond me at the moment and they have um, emergency procedures engine failure 
landing gear failure so like there is something here let's see uh, how about an, a general engine failure maybe that one Hamilton standard propellers manual feather I will cut off and then you turn off that engine so first you feather the propeller so that it's not causing any drag and then you close the engine it's just very detailed what I was not sure about is the the tanks the fuel tanks let me see if it's here cruise fuel system selection as required that's the part but there is an expanded checklist maybe that's there I'm not sure uh, hmm, doesn't seem like it cruise just cowl flaps to maintain cylinder head temperatures not exceeding 232 degrees I think yeah I think our cowl flaps are good so our cylinder head temps are below the 250 mark here all four engines looking pretty good one second we're pretty close to our destination actually to our to Mactan. so we should see Cebu right below us one second I'm gonna go outside oh that is beautiful what is that that looks amazing Yeah, that's Cebu right there. That's Cebu. And there's the airport, Pactan. Pretty amazing stuff. Probably see that from below. But one second, I have to study where should we be going next. So this is where we are. And then we'll turn 152 course. Okay, and this time, let me try and prepare for that in advance. So let me go switch to Chiro Pilot. And then let's move the OBS to, to the 152 course. The thing is, okay, let's learn from our mistake a while ago. 150, 151, 152. Right now, this VOR is being deflected to the left because we're facing, we're headed towards it. But once we go over it, we go beyond it, that will have the opposite direction. So this left deflection will be a right deflection. So we'll need to go to the right, which means before we reach that, I'm not sure, that's the part I'm not sure. How many miles before the VOR do you start turning to that new angle? I'm going to say three miles just to give a bit of, uh, I don't know, just a bit of um, heads up there. So in the meantime, we have a few seconds, let's go outside and sightsee. There it is, the busy city of Cebu looks like the philippines all right oh my goodness that is amazing and yes flying so low at 13,000 feet really makes it so much more detailed more up close and personal oh look at that guys <laughs> sorry i'm just happy with this that engine roll I know right I don't even need to speak anymore you can just that's ASMR right there and it's so bassy 3.6 okay let's start our turn maybe I'll start my turn here something like that maybe let's see if this works so at some point that will the signal will deaden is that the technical term? That might be a bit too sharp. Let's go outside again, just a bit. There's the airport right above us. And you can see that guy 
Oh, that's actually pretty cool. I think we are almost there. I might have turned a bit too fast, too abruptly. Let's turn to the left a bit. But that was close. That was getting better. So now, you can actually see that instead of counting down, that is counting up. Pretty nice. And now that's closing up there. Cool. You should hear these engines in real life. That's more hardcore, the real life uh, sounds. This is just taste. Oh my goodness. Very nice. Hey, what the? Welcome to the stream, what do you mean? Frequency. Let's turn a bit to the left. Capture that light, that uh, radial a bit better. You feel the resonance. Oh my goodness, I can almost imagine. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, let's let it track out for us. Alright, so how are we in terms of tracking? We are tracking here. So that's Maktan. That's where we came from. And then this one, the next one is Davao. Davao is already tuned in in Nav2 for VR2. But we see it's not yet registering. So if we look at Nav2 here, it's still zero. We're too far away. So right now, we still have to keep on tracking Maktan, the VR that we just came from. We flew over. And that's what we are using here as radial. Radial 152. So outbound this time. Cool. So in terms of the map, we should be around this point. We made that turn, right, at Maktan. So we should be on this leg. And that's Davao right here. So yeah, we are we just turned and that's a bit of a longer leg, so we are not in range of Davao. But once we are, we should see that this needle, this thicker needle, also face towards that 150 um, course in there. So that's a clear indication that we are on the right track. Fuel quantities. Around 1300 pounds per side. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. We will see. <laughs> but we are burning around 600 pounds of fuel per hour each engine. So 600 times 4 is 2400 pounds per hour. 2400. So if it's 600 per side, then that means. Uh, we have around what two more hours of fuel and that should be fine because in terms of the time the entire trip is only supposedly two hours 20 so we should have plenty i think that's great to hear joey oh it has been a while since i've gone to vatsim you think you will uh, be flying the dc6 with vatsim eventually that would be amazing wouldn't it I wonder if the controllers will be familiar with the descent rate of the DC-6. That means you have to descend a lot of, um, sooner. <laughs> Great to hear, man. Thanks for letting me know. Alright, 130. What else should we be checking? Temperatures are looking good. Uh, water pressure not really needed. Carb temp. The carb air, I'm not sure how to regulate, but Doug is moderating that for us. So he's, I think, as necessary uh, applying carb heat over here. You see the C signs, carb heat. We might need that on descent, I'm not sure. Fuel pressure is good on all. Oil pressure looking good. Oil temperatures below that yellow line looks good, all in all. And 
no more vibrations right minimal vibrations although we have, do have something there but uh, almost everywhere else looking pretty nice only has a center up every now and then cool almost no towered airports ah makes sense if you if you fly vat sim one to two eight ah i see i see yeah yes i would love that eventually getting into the thick of it in the u.s there are a lot of controllers most of the time right in the what do you call it in the how do you say thing? in north america uh, how do you categorize that <laughs> so, so, sorry you get what i mean the, the main island <laughs> oh my goodness that looks amazing what a view Oh, we have to do some calculations that was what I was missing we have to calculate when we start our descent okay let's do this uh huh let me see have a graph all right so we have the mega one arrival we have the VOR 35 approach let's spin all of those so that we can prepare And that engine droning sound huh it's pretty loud but it's actually quite hypnotic <laughs> all right let's see study the VOR first the final approach fix is 2500 final approach fix altitude we should be flying over the VOR at 4500 so we can use that as the target altitude I guess and then we can deploy our flaps and slow down when we get to that point so we don't have to rush things here to be on the safe side I think meditate to that droning yeah <laughs> yes definitely so let's see 4500 okay so that means our target is the VR. our target altitude is 4500 let's put that in four five okay and then we're currently at uh, 130 so we subtract 13,000 minus four five is eight five yes and then we divide that by a thousand which is 8.5 and then we multiply that by 5 because that's the descent rate the plane approximately descends or travels 5 nautical miles per minute at that point approximately so the altitude that we need to descend times five watch rob's videos for the details <laughs> basically times five okay let's just do this calculation so this means 42.5 is the distance we need to be at distance to go when we start our descent but what i learned the hard way is that that's not enough because yes you do get to that point you get to 4500 by the VOR but you're still very fast and so what I've started doing is I have been adding just 20 miles in addition so 62.5 is when we start our descent so that we hit that we hit that seven that four or five way earlier so we don't have to worry about slowing down we can slow down as we level off earlier we will slow down gradually basically is the plan just two checks because i heard something different with the engine a while ago like it was spurring fuel flow is not most even rpms are the same though in manifold pressure as well dme piece are looking good i think we're fine this guy no problems okay oh look at those clouds 
That is beautiful. Wow. Okay. So, if we need to descend 62, let's make it 63 miles before. Where does that place us? This entire leg is uh, 20. So, I'm, I'm looking at these numbers. 20 miles. This is 38. And that's so this is 43 right i think this one 43 and this is 63 is that right yeah so i think that's perfect this is exactly 63 miles so we can technically start our descent as we make our turn past davao that's pretty cool Oh, that's exactly where we... That's a good marker. But we have one more constraint. Table scan. Flying from... Oh, I forgot to put it in Sim Toolkit Pro, huh? Yeah, I forgot. Anyway. Um, we are flying from Iloilo to uh, Jensan in the Philippines. Traveling via VORs. So we can start our descent... Davao ideally but we also have to take into account the altitude restrictions at Megum the Megum 1 arrival because there might be some mountains up ahead sometimes the arrivals take that into account that's why you have altitude constraints you can't go below a certain altitude because maybe there are mountains below maybe there's uh, populated areas or whatnot so let's see if there's something so here we're at Megum 5,000 is the minimum altitude here at this airway, I think, this leg, or is it 6,000? Here it's 6,000, okay. So descend to 6,000, descend to 4,000. Interesting. Because in the chart in the other one, this is 4,500. quite interesting I'm not sure I want to follow that let's have a second look descend to 6,000 descend to 4,000 mm -hmm. I think I'll just leave it at 4 or 5 to be on the safe side yeah 4 or 5 The 028 radial. This one. 28 course. Okay. And then the approach from 4500 will be descending to 2500. Yeah, we can do that. Right, we'll see how that works. We will see how that works. Right now, where are we? We are 58 miles away from Maktan, but if you look at this one, Davao is still not active. Still not tracking it. Still too far away. Let's see. Air Force Proud 95 videos from 2016. Graphics are crazy since then. Oh my goodness. We've come quite a long way, huh? Yeah, true. Yes, it's nice to see the clouds are improving bit by bit more and more. So nice. So let me do some calculations since we're still waiting anyway. <clears throat> um, descent to 6000. So let's say we don't want to be below that at this point. So it's going to be 6,000 until here. Hmm. So we have to be at 16,000 until 15 DME from Tumblr. So we can say 6,000 is our tar target altitude. And we 
can say yeah because my plan was to be at 4500 already 20 miles before we reach the VOR but it doesn't seem like we can do that because there's a 6000 restriction in here in this leg and my plan was to be at 4520 miles before so that's 15 so around this point I wanted to be at 4 or 5 already which wouldn't work because you need to be 6000 here so I think instead I'll plan for 6000 right and then we're, when we're in the 6,000 leg, which is 28 miles, that 28 miles where we need to be at 6,000 feet, then I will, that's where I will slow down and maybe deploy some flaps to keep us slow. So by the time we need to descend to 4 or 5, we can stay slow because uh, we don't want the speed to climb up again as we start our descent after this point. didn't set the frequency in the comms ah let's double check let's double check uh 112 decimal one no we do have it 112 decimal one here let me double check that we have the right frequency it's a good spot though to be extra sure yeah i think it's right we should have it but yes i think we're still too far away hopefully that will come in time otherwise we just keep on this heading until we capture it beautiful looking island in here Wow. Island flying, why not? Alright, so if we plan for 6,000, let's see. Greetings from New Zealand. Hey, recovery. Welcome back. Mr. What time is it there? Thanks for joining again. Um, okay, let's see. So if we want to be 6,000, we do that same math here. But instead, our target altitude is... Uh, 6,0, right? And I guess we don't need this 20 here because we'll have that huge leg anyway. So we need only to be at 35 miles before we start our descent. But that's... 35 miles from Mego because that's where we want to be at 6,000 and that's where we'll be slowing down so 35 miles from Mego how do we compute that? any ideas? 2pm already there wow 4 hours difference goodness we're going to Jensan General Santos City but we'll fly over Davao first so this is Mego we need to compute 35 miles away or before it so 20, that's 20 this leg is 20 miles based on this airway this is why I want this uh, these airways gives a nice leg distance gives additional guidance on the charts so that's 20 here and that's 20 here so we should start our descent somewhere here before reaching Davao so we have 20 and we need 35 so that means we need to be 15 DME 15 miles from Davao before we reach Davao we have to start our descent to 6,000 feet does that sound okay? does that sound like a plan guys? so that's 15 miles away from Davao plus 20 miles on this leg towards Mekom we should be descending and then we should reach 6,000 feet then so we'll be 6,000 feet all the way through here and then we'll start our descent to 4,500 so we'll be slowing down there and then we'll deploy some flaps continue our descent towards the approach we'll see if that will work we'll see, we'll see in this plane all calculations are done with a slide <laughs> abacus <laughs> oh my goodness okay um, we still don't have the VOR and I'm getting slightly worried. How far is this leg? My goodness. So we have 37, 16, one second, huh? Actually, I can also use Simbri for this. So we have in Simbri, we have the flight log. 
Then we can see from Mactan to Davao, this guy, we have 215. Is this where I read this? It does look like it, right? 215 miles, that's the distance. 215 miles from Mactan to Davao, I think. If I'm reading that correctly. And so, I would expect that the middle marker would be 100 miles away from both VORs. 100 miles away from 108, 107 miles away from Mactan, 108, 107 from Davao is our uh, middle point. Right now, we are 88 miles away. Oh, and look, VR2 came alive. Nav2 is alive, so we can actually see that already. Nice. Awesome. So I guess we can switch now. I hope. Or we can make it a bit more even before we switch. I think there's a, like a norm to keep it 50-50. Also, did you hear some like switches toggling? I think Doug is some, doing something in the background and I would really want to learn what he's doing there. Because I want, want to do that on my own eventually. Checking your parachute. <laughs> I think that's for the best. <laughs> yes, because um, we're all uh, playing as we go here. <laughs> Learning things as we go. Alright. What mountain is that? Let's have a look at Little Nav Map. Let's go for a little sightseeing. So I have the plane um, coordinates turned off. But let's just add these guys. So that we can replicate the exact flight plan. And then to Davao. There you go. So that's our flight plan. So right now we are. Uh, that's this one. This was what we're seeing, I think. Coming in. Is that coming in? I think that was coming in. And now we are on the main island in Mindanao, I believe. So we should be somewhere here now. So I think that's this guy. Mount Malatufan Range National Park. Or that's Mount Mangapo. One of those. Pretty cool. Yeah, nice view. Can you open the... I, I, I was half tempted to open the windows. <laughs> that might have been a very bad move. So yes, I think that's Mount Mangabon. And yes, indeed, it says here 250 nautical miles. So that's pretty consistent with what Simbrief is saying here, 215. Uh, yes, yeah, Simbrief, right. And around 100, 708 BME. That's the middle mark. So that's probably around this point. So yes, exactly what we're seeing. Mount Mangabon. And the clouds just make everything look nicer, don't they? You've never been. Actually, you know what? Neither have I. I've been to Luzon and Visayas, but never Mindanao. Interesting. Load latest from Sim Reef. Did that update your overlay, guys? Should have added the, the the origin and destination at least. Mom's side is Kumpangan and your dad is a Manila boy. Ah, Luzon, all the way. Yes. Northern Luzon is amazing as well. I was flying from Lawag to Manila the other day. It's amazing, this one. So Northern Luzon, Lawag is right here. Almost at the tip of Luzon. Going south to Manila, the capital. So that's this leg here. This guy. Around 218 miles. Not a long flight, but this strip here. These are all mountains. If you go to terrain, 
Yeah, these are all mountains. Mount Pulag, the famous Mount Pulag is right here. A lot of hikers going there. So lots of mountain ranges. Very nice. I think I captured some photos. One second, if I can find it. Maybe I can show you some. Oh, one second. We're now at the half mark, 108, so the other one should be 107. Oh, look at that! Amazing maths! It's working, guys! It's clicking into place. <laughs> For now. Alright, so, so one second. Huh? Let me focus on this one first. Switch to localize to gyro pilot. Let's switch the frequency. Right, that should change there, barely, and then switch back to gyro pilot. There should be some minimal adjustments there. There shouldn't be a lot. I'm looking for the screenshots of Northern Luzon. Yeah, this one. Just some nice views all over the mountain ranges. That's my wallpaper currently, actually. Not in the middle. Yes, I like taking photos. <laughs> Philippine Airlines. I would have wanted this livery, but it's not available for the cargo version. Yeah, I have three wallpapers right now. Let me show you because it's a triple monitor setup. So it's. Uh, Where is it? This guy. That's my wallpaper. One for each monitor. So my left monitor has this center and then the right one has that. Super nice. It's perfect for the monitors. Okay, did you switch already? 99.6. Okay, good. And the next one is Tumblr actually already. Let's have a look. So Tumblr is 114 decimal 5. 114 decimal 5. Let's go with that. I doubt we'll be able to track that yet. Yeah, yeah it's too early. Okay. 97 miles. Okay, good. An air bridge. What is an air bridge? Is that different from a jetway? <laughs> Let's have a check on our fuel. 1,000 pounds. Yeah, we have almost two hours of flight time left. If we are burning each side on 600 pounds per hour. And I'm loving all these calculations. Really trains your head to do some simple maths, huh? Which I must admit I have plenty of uh, I need to do more often. Oh my goodness. I did not expect such a scenic sight. Lucky. Some take some photos from outside. Um, mind the volume guys, sorry about this, but maybe you like it. a lot better from in front at the back it looks like a giant hot dog <laughs> this is good the 
but yeah, those four engines. They're humongous propellers. Amazing stuff. Does anyone remember how far away we need to be before we start our descent from Davao? DME. Oh, is maybe that's what I'm clicking? Maybe I'm accidentally hitting that? It's the wiper. But it's not working because it needs hydraulic power, I think. And right now, we our hydraulics is on bypass there. We need to put that down, that lever, that black lever, so that the landing gear, the flaps will work. So it's some kind of lock. Because when you're cruising, you don't really need any of those. 63, thank you. Oh, but wait. We needed to change that, right? Didn't we say we were descending to 6,000 by Megum? So that's... Is it 35? 35 miles from Megum? And then we'll slow down there. We'll enter descent phase. So that's around 90 BMEP. BMEP is like the measure of the engine's power of the, the, the power that the engine makes using a combination, a calculation of the manifold pressure, the RPM so that's like the overall power indicator so we'll go to around 90 BMEP for the descent that will slow us down while we're flying level but yeah, this plane the, does not want to slow down it really just likes to stay airborne as much as it can so we'll give it, you have to give it a lot of time to slow down. Pretty cool. Alright, so we have quite a bit of time. Still 79 miles. Brake mean effective pressure is BMEP. Ah, thank you, thank you. <sighs> I never quite got that. The what is it? Like even the term brake force power. Why is it? Why is there a brake in front? It sounds very like the opposite. Like horsepower is for like moving, but you have have a brake in front. Does that pertain to any kind of actual braking? I think I heard Squirrel try to explain that before, but I never, I didn't listen well enough. <laughs> My goodness. Oh my goodness, the front view, guys. Menacing look. Oh, you should see this guy. You should see this guy during landing. It looks massive with all the flaps deployed. Oh my goodness. I think I have a photo here. One second. The brake is what loads the engine. So horsepower can be measured. Ah. Oh, interesting. That's starting to make sense. I think I'll have to look into that more. That's why. I think it's hard to see, but one second. Yeah. It's from the video from yesterday. I took some photos before I landed. That guy. But it looks so menacing from the front view. Let's, let me say, try to see if we can zoom in. Right? It's massive. 80,000 pounds of metal slowly descending onto the ground. Method of calculating BMP, BMEP of these engines while in use is incredibly complicated. <laughs> Noted. I think I'll stick to BMEP then. Goodness. All the dials. We haven't even touched anti ice. Or the, I also like the level of detail, like how these dials are not same colored. I don't quite know how to explain. They don't even have the same indentation. Like 0510 
is different from 0, 5, 10. The distance is different. But they're all maxing out at 45. So they have the same capacity, looks like. But somehow, it seems to be more important to know the details on the outer sides of the tanks. There must be an explanation there somewhere. In here, in the ox tanks, the alternate tanks, it's the opposite. You put more detail on the lower levels over here. Ah. I would imagine this is because of some fuel uh, balancing things when you change the fuel tanks. Hey, Gamaste! Snow Runner Hardcore Mode! Oh my goodness, props to you! <laughs> Snow Runner default is hardcore enough for me. Yeah, I think what it is is I can imagine when the fuel tanks, these fuel tanks are getting low, you have to pay close attention to them. So every small detail, every small change you want to be... Yeah, exactly, exactly what Alex said. Because I think you're emptying them out. And when you're emptying them out, you want to see those details as they trickle down. So you know when to switch. So there is, they put much more detail in there. So when you're running out of fuel on these tanks, I guess, you have to pay close attention so you know when you have to switch them. Do crossfeed and whatnot. And the crossfeed controls are somewhere here. This is the indication when you are... Uh, oh my goodness. One second. <laughs> oh, this one. Either the main tanks or the alternate tanks. So full forward and all means all of them are using their own main tanks. And then this one on the right is the crossfeed. Whether you feed 1 and 2, 3 and 4, or you cross feed to all. So some complex thing there, but we'll think about that later on. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Exactly. <laughs> we'll just stick to short flights and uh, just deal with the main tanks for now. <laughs> How are we? 56. Okay, still quite a ways off. Good. All indicators are good. I hope. Yes, looking good there. Free air, this is the outside air temperature. So we're at 5 degrees Celsius. It's actually pretty warm, huh? 5 degrees at 13,000 feet. Yeah, you're in the Philippines, alright. Weight imbalance gyrations. Oh my goodness. Why is the old temperature warm? that normal it's not unsafely hot but we are cruising so I would have expected that to have cooled down but maybe because it is warm outside right five degrees outside I think that's pretty warm for this altitude we're in a perfectly tropical country look at this you can even top up the different quantities and I'm not sure if Doug, our flight engineer, takes care of topping them up for us. You have engine oil, you have water, alcohol quantity, auxiliary oil, anti-ice fluid. And all of those have their own measures in this dial, in these dials. So we have uh, anti-ice here, anti-ice fluid, oil, ox oil. You have the hydraulic reservoir, uh, water for each tank all temperature all pressure so I'm not sure if because the the engine hours are persistent right so right now I've already accumulated a total of eight hours on this specific livery alone I think I think each livery has their own it's like a separate plane understandably so it has its own timer this one in particular, I've flown for 8 hours. So I'm not sure, or 11 hours in total here. So I'm not sure if um, eventually I will need to top them off. Or just dog top them, top them off every flight. You have a book of over 700 pages on nothing but this engine. <laughs> what, you read it for... Uh, it's your light reading. <laughs> Are radial engines used anywhere else aside from aircraft? 
do you use that kind of engine in I don't know cars trucks massive beasts in mind we are flying the Douglas DC-6 from PMDG this beast right here massive sounds it's a cargo plane as well so you can see some crates on the inside load it up yes it is it's a custom plane by PMDG these are the developers PMDG. and PMDG stands for Precision Manuals Development Group I only learned recently and that is why they have this 333 page manual right here let's see if it's listed here uh, it's not really here I don't think intro I think in the intro so the intro itself introduction manual it's uh, 69 pages precision manuals development group there it is MDG. they have the development team I think the one doing the videos is Rob this guy I think And you have the beta testers so nice getting all that flavor and history there's a bit of history there if I remember correctly one second huh? the cockpit faith faithfully recreates this aircraft down to the occasionally mislabeled placards so this aircraft that they've modeled is based on a real plane this guy Sold to Red Bull, joining the Flying Bulls. Oscar Echo Lima Delta Mike in Austria, I think. In Salisbury, maybe? I think it's there right now. Pretty nice. There have been a few cars with radial engines. Ah, very few some helicopters with radials as well cool even some military tanks goodness this plane makes daily runs in Alaska until now? oh that's cool hey Plague thanks for joining I would want to fly there eventually flying in Alaska I've had a couple of people recommend that in the videos fly in Alaska with the Everett's livery doing cargo runs Pretty cool. What is this? AFE States. Ooh. So this is what it's doing. In charge of all power application and propeller pitch. Sets flaps, mixture. carb temp 15 degrees so it it triggers the carb heat accordingly to reach a carb temp of 15 degrees interesting so yeah i think that's the descent is usually when it happens actually also during takeoff so i guess when there are altitude changes and this is the the key thing here that we must rem remember you must manage your own power settings because all these other steps all these other steps that Doug is in charge of that but before landing we have to set our physical throttles and that's what I, my recommendation for PMDG is right now those throttles are not in sync with my physical throttles right because Doug is pushing them mine is at idle right now my physical ones but when I get to that level when I take the before landing phase then it will respect where my physical throttles are at and with that desync so usually the throttles would suddenly go to idle so i have to push them forward i have to adjust where they are i have to guess so my recommendation is we have a lot of extra space here why not use a little bit of this space 
to show where the virtual throttle is and where the physical throttles are so that you can before you take that before landing you can align them one is to one and then you can take the before landing and you wouldn't have that huge jump in the engine power which may, i think makes sense i think in the 737 and the zebo 737 and x-plane i think there is that kind of indication to show where the physical throttles are versus where the virtual ones are and that's something definitely you won't see in real life but that's something that is a factor in the simulator yes i'm using the plane in on air at the moment we are doing our flight here we are pretty close to davao 15 miles we should actually start our descent soon interesting okay good enough monologuing but i will not trigger the descent phase yet because we can speed up we can uh, lose the speed later as we get closer to uh, maybe 6,000 or 10,000 feet so let's see if we can spot Davao here hey, that might be Davao already and Mount Apple should be I guess that one could be I think so why is this guy turning left I think it's starting to hunt for the VOR because the VOR is getting more sensitive as we get closer. So I think it's having a harder time trying to hunt that out. Yeah, let's go to Gyro Pilot here. Just go level. That's okay. We can take it from here. And then let's double check Navigraph once again. We should be at uh, 208 course. Okay, so let's two zero, set 208 in here. Okay. What's happening? Am I missing something? Because I'm not able to move the dial. Oh, there you go. It's moving now again. I was scared. We're also a bit late when it comes to the 208. So that's 210. It's 208. A bit late when it descent, that's fine. So let's start. Let's remove altitude hold here and let's start descending just a thousand feet per minute. I'm looking at the VSI here. Bit by bit. Moving the glide, climb glide wheel. In clumsy colors oh you're right yeah that's perfect yeah i actually don't need to have any special livery huh i just need to slap in a cg logo maybe <laughs> like the sound of that there we go so just we just maintain a thousand feet per minute descent and we'll have to play with that a couple of times because that's going to wobble quite a bit so let's see we have to turn right towards 201 and I guess we can start that when we're around, let's say two miles this time, two miles away from the VOR. Let's try if that works better. That's the airport right in front of us. Mount Apo, I think, is that one. Yeah, that's for sure Mount Apo. Very famous mountain. Okay. Descending still at 1,000 feet per minute. That's good. So if you look, our ground speed is 272 knots, getting close to 300 knots per uh, 300 knots. The five nautical mile per minute travel on the ground is based on a 300 knot ground speed. looking good there let's get track IR back and it's going to get a bit busy and I love how the clouds just blend with the scenery three three miles yeah we can start that now 
start our right turn 201 that is beautiful looking good or 201 is it 207 you know what I forgot I think it's 207 that should work so now we are seeing that the VOR is behind us and that the DME counter is increasing and now you can see that is going more and more to the middle that is looking great might have to turn a bit to the left though capture that a bit faster still descending a thousand feet per minute that's good no mountains in front of us that's always good Looking good there, alright. Let's capture that radio. Clear of all volcanoes, yes. <laughs> oh, look at that view. Yeah, that's the how the Philippines looks like. Nailed it. Yeah, if we was, were flying over there, that might have been a bit more tricky. I think that mountain is actually higher than us. Or am I descending too fast? No, it's okay. My guy is continuously hunting around. I think I... Oh, crap. I have some fragile cargo and it looks like we have some intense banking here one second stop moving left and right you go wings level right now let's do this manually let me double check it's a 208 208 Two eight cores, okay. And six thousand feet is our target. Have to be wary of that. There it is. Level out there and follow that you are. Good there. Hope so. Seven thousand feet. All right. Let's see. I think both VORs are being captured already because we have one one four decimal three. And uh, here, yeah, 54 miles, looking good. You can actually switch over already. Let's do that because all our other calculations will be based on that. Nice. Clouds, oh, pushing through clouds, punching through clouds, guys. It's going to be amazing. Let's go to descent phase here. Slow it down. 26 inches, please. Setting 26 inches. Because we are actually, I think, getting close to 250 knots here. Inches set. Descent, Don't want please. to go beyond that. Automatism and flight instruments cross -checked. Now we're close to 6,000. On. on. Low is low. Low. Hey, Rohan. Descent checks are complete. Descent checks complete. Nice. 
and you can see as we level off here we're starting to slow down as well not quite not quite there yet there you go Just live stay on that altitude looking good so 6,000 feet let's see where we are how are you doing Rohan speed brakes slowing it down is a bit I know right yes so now if you look we are at 90 BMEP and we are currently at 200 uh, is that 20 210 200 knots and you can see it's slowing down ever so slowly and what we need is it to get to this point the 174 knots because that is the point where we can deploy our flaps you can see here flaps 0 to 30 174 knots so we need to slow it down there and that's why we need that long level leg where we can stay in descent phase in 90 BMEP to slow us down that long so we really need that point um, now one second did I tune this incorrectly? yeah I tuned this incorrectly my bad uh, 114.3 I think that's the old one one second huh 112 point 112 decimal one is dava 114 decimal five is tumbler okay my bad 114 decimal five there you go one on four decimal five there you go. okay good all right now we can capture that again so we are now what 41.5 miles away from tumblr vor and if you look at navigraph here didn't we say that we are 43 miles is that start of mego because that's 25 plus 18 43 now that we are around 40 miles away we should be somewhere around here i think where the heck is this guy going No, 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 no. What the heck is the plane doing? One second. Turn that off. It's messing up. It actually went around. MSFS? <laughs> Did we just get the typical bug in there? The Microsoft Flight Simulator? That was strange. Yeah, the autopilot. I turned it off for now. So let's descend to 6,000 feet again. Let's see, look at our speed now, guys. 160 knots, well within the flap extension range. Awesome. Two zero eight what we need that's a bit weird okay, I'm hand flying this for now until things stabilize setting the dead zone to a certain point yeah in some planes that's uh, very um, sensitive thing although in our case i haven't seen that become a problem before in this plane it's the first time i've gotten this weird autopilot thing maybe it's a bit camera shy that's okay we'll get back on track here we just hand fly this until we get back on track and then we can automate it again but we are in the arrival now now we have to see when we should start descending to 4500 feet okay there's 6000 hold that the problem with this plane as well not really a problem but something that I still have to get used to is it there is a delay in the controls so when you push on the yoke when you pull on the yoke 
there's like a second or two seconds before it takes into effect and it's quite uh, misleading you feel like some, nothing is happening so you're pulling harder pushing harder and then you end up pushing too much so you end up with kind of seesawing technique something I noticed recently here we are okay right in line again and now it makes sense guys look at this now it's making sense why there is a 6,000 altitude constraint because right below us are some mountains so if we just decided to do that path let me trim here where we are descending all the way to four or five we might be in danger there so thankfully we took and listened to what the arrival was saying right looking good six thousand all right there we go let's level it out okay that looks good so let's turn that on again let's see if this time if it will work why is it doing that look at that no 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 doesn't work guys the autopilot is broken it looks seems like it looks like i'll have to hand fly this the rest of the way okay that means i have to have navigraph on my other side my left side so i can study it while i'm hand flying oh not the easiest okay one second let me load the arrival in here my goodness getting hammered in on air would have been so much easier if we had some autopilot in here I wonder what could have gone wrong hmm, interesting let's descend descend trim it out okay let's see we should start our descent 15 dme 15 dme we should start our descent to 4,000 feet okay so before we do that before that happens i will want to deploy some flaps already so by the time we descend we don't pick up some speed again I blame Rohan. Yeah, exactly. It's like sabotage, you know? It was working great, and then suddenly the autopilot just wouldn't work. Banking crazy. Weird. I wonder if I did something wrong, or if this is a Microsoft bug. Oh, there, it's Jay. Yes, we can blame him too. Blame everyone else but me. <laughs> How are you guys? Report this bug, yes. Once the footage is out, I will post in the forums and ask about it. Can someone help what timestamp we have right now? Oh, it will be different later in the video. Never mind, it's going to be different later because in the stream we have that kind of counter. Okay, start descending 6,000 feet DME is 27.5 need to start descending at 15 DME there's 6,000 feet level out slowly clip what? <laughs> what's happening? Right, looking good now that we are here let's go to the in range mainly what in range does is that dog will be enabling hydraulics that's one of the crucial things so that we can start with flaps because right now if i try to extend my flaps the lever will move but you will see that the indicator there doesn't really do anything because the hydraulics are off or bypassed or however the term should be trim it out there we go easy peasy cooling turbine okay 
normal. Fuel booster pumps. Set auto low. On low. Fuel tank selectors. Mains on, cross feed off. Oh, so you can go back and share it, right. Down. I might make a highlight, I'm not sure if it will be 30 seconds only. That's a good point, I can cut that actual part of the video. Good idea. I'll do that later. It should be around the 2 hour 50 mark or less. Thanks guys. Does this thing look good? Wearing a parachute now. So now look, the hydraulic. That should be in the down now. Let me double check. Yeah, it's now in the down position, this black lever. That means when we do start extending flaps, then it will work. Great. Not yet. And that makes sense why we can only descend at 15 dME. Because there were mountains in the vicinity a while ago. Cool. Alright. Now what are the winds saying? At Jensan, variable at 4 knots. So that's okay. Let's continue with this 3.5 because this is what we planned for. Good. And look at the speed guys. It's perfect. 160, 170, 175, 174. That is exactly the speed we need to be at so we can start extending flaps. Awesome. So that means before we start our descent again, I would want to extend to maybe flaps 20, flaps 10. So we can maintain that speed. Otherwise, we'll have to get a level leg again to slow down. Hey, Domsky. The gyro is... Oh, no, it, that was zeroed out a while ago. Okay, it's zero out now. Let's try. Maybe it works now. No, it still does something different. Yeah, it's weird. I think it's bug. Let's get back to the profile. Should be at 4,000 now. Um, I should descend to 4,000 now, yes, because uh, we have just reached reached the fourth, uh, 15 DME mark. So I'm descending to 4,500, thank you for letting me know. But I should actually, before that happens, I, before I forget, let's level up a bit here, lose some airspeed, there we go. So. Extending my flaps. Flaps 10. Push forward on the yoke because it will have that pitch up tendency. And then let's start descending. 4,500. 1,000 feet per minute. There we go. That looks good. I think flaps 10 should be enough. We'll see. Alright. Moving to the... I think flaps 10 will not be enough. Flaps 15. Flaps 20. Slow us down, bro. Ten miles away, okay. That's fine. I want to change my course now to 142 so I can get ahead of it. 142 is the the back how do you call it the start of the approach 140 141 142 okay looks good and then i'm just using this arrow to aim towards the vor that will have to turn sharp left later looking good guys looking good you see the, the airport in front? should see the airport up ahead. 7 miles. 
You see it? That's the one. That's the one. Nice. And this VSI is super sensitive because each hundred feet has that uh, line. So each variation you change, it's super sensitive. The, the needle really goes up and down. So have to not be totally engrossed in it. So we'll be flying over the airport here at 4,500 feet and show you the approach. Yeah, 4,500 VOR here and then we'll turn left 142 course for 8 BME and then we'll turn left and then we'll we'll, we'll play it by ear <laughs> okay almost there 4,500 almost there There we go, 4,500. Thank goodness we had a bit of help with the autopilot for most of the flight. It only screwed up when Rohan and Jay arrived, but <laughs> just adds a bit more excitement, doesn't it? There it is. Okay, let's focus on the landing the approach first getting too low okay two miles that's fine should be able to start turning to the left here let's not descend anymore turning left to 147 one four two. All these numbers. Looking good. Still descending, but that's okay because we really need to descend now. Descending to two thousand five hundred feet. going to look outside because the instruments are kind of confusing especially the VSI it's too sensitive you can see the needle on the VOR and close One, four, two. there you go there you go perfect okay so let's hold that let's now focus on the descent and now we should be able to start our before landing checks uh, but that will mean I have to push my physical throttles forward now around let's say 50% let's say roughly and let's continue descending here and then when I hit the before landing my throttles will change because of that gap between the virtual and physical throttles so pay close attention to that one oh that is actually close nice the gap was minimal so let's set 100 percent 100 bmep rather At 8 BME, we will start our right turn. And we should be following the 352 course. So many things to remember. Hey, Janik. Oi. <laughs> How are you doing, man? Our final approach here, hand flying, because autopilot has messed up. Or I messed up autopilot, either way. is it that it doesn't finish 
There, that was that took that took a long time. Goodness. I think we are a bit late. A bit late, but that's fine. Gears going down. Making our turn towards final. And this one we'll have to change to 352. Of course. Gear down unlocked, three rings, props. 2400 RPM. 352. That's 350. One, See how useful Doug is if I have to do all of this manually. Oh my goodness, there is no chance I can do this all manually. Okay. Alright, so now we are trying to intercept that 352 course 352 course that's the final approach course we should be facing the runway when we make that happen there's the runway okay not as ideal but let's adjust here the engine noise of this plane is very therapeutic I know, right? <laughs> That's why I was asking a while ago. I was asking Alex if he wa if he wanted, uh, was asking the folks if they wanted to lower the volume. And Alex was like, "Are you kidding?" <laughs> okay, two thousand five hundred. At eight point two dme, we should start our descent. At around, uh, around 600 700 feet per minute okay that's what the VOR is saying the VOR approach but it's all manual anyway there's no like glide slope to follow that's why you can see in the VOR there are these barber uh, how do you say barber lines what's the term again yeah because that means there is no vertical guidance here VOR is still not aligned. Where are we? Start our descent here. Going flaps 30. There's the runway. Actually, we can eyeball this. We don't need to rely on the VOR anymore. Flaps 40. So at this point, the, the major difference I've learned is we stay at a hundred BMEP we don't touch the throttles at all and instead we are actually just modifying the flaps if we need to slow down if we need to go lower we go flaps 50 if we are right on profile we go up back to flaps 40 if we need to be faster higher we go back to flaps 30 so it's playing between 30 40 50 all throughout until we get to that point and the only time we touch the throttles is during landing during the actual uh, moving to idle but yeah this one looks good this one looks great all right wise man we are tracking not specifically but autopilot just now we had a problem it's quite interesting and it looks like i need to be faster here this plane really wants to fly doesn't want to land so you have to really put it nose down awesome stuff wise man thanks for hanging out welcome back man appreciate you being here again it's been a while looking forward to having you soon have a great night goodness pretty late there huh can't even see the poppy lights it's too bright or is this all white? That's why I can't see it. Yeah, there we go. Three white, one red. Oh, I can't reach my pedals. One second. <laughs> there we are. There we go. 
too white to red there's a house right before the runway there it is and now as we get closer softly reversers and yes even the rudders are delayed that's why it's so hard to balance them in the middle you step on the left it takes like a second before it reacts thank you <laughs> we managed to land guys but can we manage to stop that might be a different Proposition altogether. Ooh. We need to turn around. Man, that looks amazing. What mountain is that? Hanging out by the runway. Probably not a wise move. Phew. <laughs> Thanks. Not exactly on the landing zone, but I wanted to butter it more, so I floated a bit just for a better sound on impact on touchdown. Thanks, guys. Let's have a look while we're taxiing there. What is that right in front of us? Oh, Mount Matutu. Hmm. It's not familiar with me. Mount Patutum. Looks like it has a pretty pointy tip there. It's a bit like Mount Mayon. Maybe we should go faster high in the runway. The shaking. Mr. You hit it. <laughs> oh my goodness. The autopilot did not help much, but thankfully we managed. Thank you guys for the support. We are on the home stretch here about to deliver our cargo. Just make a U-turn here. This airport has a very nice uh, turnaround point. And those brakes, huh? Need some oil or something. And if you watch the video from yesterday where we had the exclamation point YouTube gets you there in case you're new more than welcome to join the YouTube channel it's a, it's a, it was a short video three minute long just giving you ASMR vibes of this plane takeoff landing and how the radial engines pull up and whatnot and uh, oh my goodness it lost, lost my train of thought <laughs> I was building the intro and I forgot what I wanted to say why I mentioned that. Oh yeah, 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 the, the replay. That was a replay. So I used the flight uh, recorder to record the replay and then I took the footage of it. You might notice that the brakes were squealing all throughout even while I was doing the takeoff. Which seems very strange, right? But yeah, I guess that's one of the replay quirks because here, we don't really have that. We only have that squealing when we are actually tapping the brakes. Doing a takeoff again, guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> a true radial explanation. Oh yes, we'll need one of those from Alex himself. How's the fuel? 500 pounds each side. Not bad, 2,000 pounds left. Actually, not bad. Man, those low sounds are amazing. That growl, that bass. And you can hear actually the, the cockpit shaking. It's like some glass parts in there. I don't know what that is. They like it. <laughs> the taxi in the most exciting part of the flight maybe not 
have a look at the diagram yeah sure there should be a turn off point here on the left yes the wind sock right in the middle now the cool thing you guys might have noticed a while ago we didn't have to set up any fms right no pro fms programming no uh no fancy computers in here so we were navigating as we go switching vors as we transfer super cool and at the same time there's no apu so when you land there is no apu to start up you just taxi to the gate it's really nice oh by the way this is a an airport scenery jensan you can see some custom stuff there this is the guy who made it kero team oh yeah kero team is actually the same guy who made the philippine airlines livery pretty nice i'm not sure what that is kenya kanai that's probably a, a local dialect here i'm not familiar what uh, dialect they speak here but it's not Tagalog for sure Tagalog is more Northern Luzon or Luzon yeah I think Northern Luzon might be more right and I will be staying away from those jetways <laughs> might hit the wing again it's been the safe side that's really cool huh Aerial sceneries and Kerotin. Oh, there are two of them. It's quite nice. Fellow Filipinos. Payload integrity 92%. Yeah, I hate it. We can blame the autopilot for that. Do we actually get paid less if we do that? If we have that damage? We'll have a look at on-air. Oh, I actually didn't ask him to clean up the plane. My bad. He's turning off the... Off the landing checks complete. Actually, I'm not sure what he was turning off there. I still have to study that. Parking brake is set. Cut engines. Think the mixture of each one. Ah, ease and quiet. <laughs> oh, I kind of miss the hum of the engines now. Engines go, phew, we made it. <laughs> Look at the level of detail here, guys. Even the windows. When we open the windows, they're also reflected. Well, on that side. Well, yeah, we op only opened the left one, right? Oi. Not yet done. Even the windows are reflected properly. Quite nice. Let's open up everything. You can unload the cargo now. Super cool. Now how that gets unloaded is the problem of the airport staff. It's not our problem anymore. Actually, how is that powering up if the batteries are off? Because it is off. Hmm. Well, that's on them, right? Let's open the stairs here. Let's put in everything. Show you everything, guys. There they are. I don't know what those are, but you have those engine pans, those blue things. There they are. But all the other stuff as well. Super cool. And now we can unload the crates. Et voila. Now you see them. Now you don't. Happy. Okay, let's have a look at on air. Oh crap, I didn't realize the time was so late. <laughs> I'm so busy hand flying. Uh, point twenty-eight. Okay, looking good. We're in there. XP sixteen. Job finished. 
Yeah, condition 92.3% at delivery. Let's have a look if we got a bit of penalty because of that. Um, manage VA. And while that's loading, let's have a look here. If there was some damage. Okay, I earned around uh, 400k maybe? 337k. And that's my share alone. So the VA itself also earned some stuff in here, supposedly. Let's see what the penalty is. Seven seventy nine, ninety two point three. I think it did get cheaper. I think it was eight hundred plus before. Might be, yeah. Maybe it got a bit lower. But it's still there, right? It's just a bit cheaper. Bit of expense. Cool. So all in all, earned around how much? 400k more or less for the airline? Awesome. Well, I'm happy with that. Thank you guys for sticking around. Sorry for running late and uh, hope you enjoyed as much as I did. My goodness, this plane is amazing. As you have seen, such a manual plane to fly. Just the autopilot, that wonky bit, I'm not sure why. And look at the reflection, you can even reflect the, the green light there at the top on the plane itself. Beautiful metal parts. Awesome stuff. Thank you guys. Appreciate the company. Catch you on Friday for some trucking. Have a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye, have a great time. Bye, have a great time indeed. Have a good one and bye-bye. Come see flying. It wouldn't trigger. There you go.